Hi, I'm Kelly Hill Ross, and thanks so much for tuning in to another show. As a citizen of Maryland, I had an opportunity to meet two progressive women from the Maryland Democratic Party. Eva Lewis, who is the executive director, and Yvette Lewis, chairwoman of the Maryland Democratic Party. They aren't related to each other, but they both have the same goals when it comes to politics. So get your favorite beverage, tea, or coffee, and listen in to what they had to say. First of all, I want to say thank you to uh, both of you for allowing me to interview you um, at this historic time in um, our lives, uh, and it's very important. And I have to thank um, uh, Patricia Thomas uh, for um, yeah. introducing me to you two uh, young ladies, uh, because this is just uh, phenomenal. It started with the first question. Um, at what stage in your life did you decide to get involved in politics? And this is all of the questions are directed to the both of you. Um, you know, it was interesting for me because I started out, I had a career on stage. I was an opera singer and I certainly had no intention of, of doing politics, but it was the um, Bush Gore election that, uh, that did it for me. Um, it was a situation where um, when that challenge came up to the election, and I saw how emotional and invested everyone was. And I felt like I had not done anything. All I did was vote it. And I made the decision then that I would never be a bystander to political decisions that would be made for me moving forward ever again. So from that point on, I started volunteering and working in campaigns because I wanted to be more than a casual bystander to the political process but also to my destiny. And that's exactly the way I felt. So that's what led me to politics. Mm -hmm. And and, in, and for me, I guess in a sort of way, I, I fell into it just like Yvette, like, you know, since the age of 18, been voting in, in every single election. Um, but it wasn't until I made the transition from um, Chicago. I was I was an attorney in Chicago and moved to um, uh, back back home to Maryland and, you know, was looking for a job and it was 2012 campaign. And so I decided to volunteer and then got a job as an organizer. And then that led me down this road um, and having haven't looked back since so I guess and, and that way kind of fell into it where it wasn't like a direct hit in terms of like I wanted to do politics but it's like more of once you see how the sausage is made you're like well maybe there's a better way of making the sausage <laughs> yes. okay well um, what were some of the obstacles um, that you, you've mentioned a few that prompted you to get involved um, did you see as you were saying um, Yvette that you felt like you weren't really making a difference, so you, you got into it, but were there any major obstacles that you said, oh no, this, I, I don't want to see this again, I, I got to get involved? Yeah, well, just having the will of the people overturned, that was mm -hmm. an obstacle. Um, you know, uh, there, all, there, there will always be an asterisk beside George Bush's name because the Supreme Court came in and decided what happened with that election. So I felt like people's voices were silenced. And then as we moved forward and the voting rights bill was allowed to expire, once again, people's yeah. voices are being silenced. And then all of these um, uh, suppressive type of types of uh, things were put in people's way. For example, uh, voter ID laws and mm -hmm. gerrymandering, um, all of this put in the way of people being able to exercise their rights and have their voices heard. So that has made me even more determined. And it's not like a one hit wonder. These things continue yep. every single day with people being denied the right to vote. And that just makes me more committed to staying involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, and, and the same thing. Um, and I think for, for some, like particularly on our local level, some races that are determined by 17 votes, right? The, the one that pops to my mind is um, the current uh, Baltimore County uh, uh, County Executive Johnny O, who won his primary by 17 votes, right? And, the, and, and it just goes to show you that voting matters, right? And the, the things that go behind the scenes um, in terms of making making sure you get out the vote matter. And we all know the challenges that are put, the obstacles that are put into people's uh, uh, way, um, but knowing that there is a way to jump over those, those hurdles and then also at some point remove those hurdles at, once we have the right leaders in place. You know, that is um, fantastic because I understand that uh, in addition to 
you know, um, the people going out to vote, there's also, what is it called, the electoral vote? That's also a deciding mm -hmm. factor that I think a lot of people who vote don't know about that. They yeah. don't know how that process, you know, um, works. Um, why do you think that there are some people who just don't get involved or, or don't vote? You have well, for me, I think yeah. that part of the problem is I don't think we've done a good enough job of explaining to people how consequential and important their vote is. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've gone about it the wrong way. I think we tend to talk about voting from the top down. Mm -hmm. President, you know, the national elections. I think we need to, to, to flip the switch. I think we need to talk about voting from the bottom up. What your county council does, what your central committees do, what your sheriff does, how do we, your attorney general. You know, you get upset when you see certain, case, certain cases where an attorney general comes out, for example, and gets involved in the Bush v. Gore, or an attorney general gets involved, for example, in the Breonna Taylor case. Well, these are elected positions. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to start talking to people from the bottom up and getting them to understand how important their local elections are and how those elections impact their everyday lives. Because right now, people often say, well, it's not doing anything for me. Nothing changes. Well, things do change when you work from the bottom up instead of from the top down. I think that's where we need to start focusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just giving concrete examples of how that affects your life. Uh, and so people can actually see that this, these elected leaders do matter to you. Um, and in some ways, even the local elections are, are even more important than the, the national. Um, because our county council uh, and, and the city council folks have a lot of power over our everyday lives. Well, do you think that, and this is sort of a question that I, I didn't pose, do you, you think that maybe if it is um, perhaps in school, if, if um, kids were taught about it early on and they understood the process by the time they, you know, get to, to be a person who can vote, they understand the whole process. You think that's something that could happen as well? Yeah. Yes, for sure. Like, I, I here's the thing. Like, I, I think I've seen on TV shows like, like a civics class, and I don't know how, how if that those classes are still going on. But we probably do need to re as, as Yvette would know, because uh, a, a former teacher yourself, um, civic classes I think would would definitely. Uh, be helpful because one like if you were to go on, on the, sh the street right now and ask you know uh, the regular residents like what are the three branches of the government you know a lot of people would have some difficulty saying what are the three branches of our, our, our federal government um, and then there are things that like even folks who vote on a regular pace basis still don't understand and here's the thing because they, they got lives and like there are other people will focus on this but like how laws get passed in Maryland like in here in Annapolis and things like that and how like once again I go back to the sausage like how is the sausage made uh, in terms of our laws and the voting and, and that's the sort of thing that uh, we definitely could do more education can on and and there are some resources where people try to make it fun and and entertaining um, for people to digest it. I think there's some adults that can take those, take those classes as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't need to do it with the kids in school. There's some adults that can take those classes. Quite frankly, for example, there are people right now in our state that don't know what a state senator does or what the delegate does. The difference mm -hmm. between the state senator, the difference between the delegate. They don't understand what the city council does, what the county council does. They just don't get it. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that are different. What the mayor does, for mm -hmm. example, right? So these are things that I think uh, we could all uh, use a refresher course on. Okay, so um, how long have the two of you been involved in politics? Yeah, so I, mine is shorter, uh, so I'll go first. Uh, so I, I've been involved since um, I, I, I had done like one-off phone banks here and there, like a little bit college and then law school, but really it was the 2012 Obama campaign um, where I was a fellow and then got a paid position as an organizer. Organizer. Um, so since I would say the end of 20, 2011 t till now. And for me, it was 2000 with the mm -hmm. uh, with the Al Gore um, um, election. And I think about that so much now. How much different things would have been had you know we we started we had won that election? What would have what would have been different? I mean, there would have been no Iraq War. It's entirely possible that well over 4,000 people would still be alive. Yeah. You know, we just don't know what course history would have taken us. So that's why I'm just determined uh, now 
to be as much a part of the conversation and as much a part of the process as I can be. Okay, so um, can you give me some positive corners that will help people to understand the political process um, that they can do? Um, what, what should we be doing to make ourselves more knowledgeable? Can you think of anything on a local level? Absolutely. Well, first off, all of our elected officials, our local elected officials, they are constantly having community meetings mm -hmm. and town halls, and uh, they send out information. They have websites that's chock full of information. We can be proactive participants and proactive learners in this process. If you're a novice, and even if you're on, you aren't a novice, you owe it to yourself to find out what positions your elected officials have and how that impacts your life. And do you agree with it? And don't let another election cycle pass by, you know, calling your neighbor and say, hey, have you gotten your ballot? Tell me who to vote for. You need to know who to vote for, right? <laughs> That's true. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think people just have to, like, I'm assuming, you know, most people get news from somewhere, right? So if their their news is like they're on their phone, they're on their, their, their Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, like follow your elected officials, like, um, and, and, and see what they're posting. Like, they, they, they are active. And so they will be posting like what's going on in the community. If you're an email person, like sign up for the emails. They they, they send out consistent emails on a, like, sometimes weekly, if not a monthly basis. Um, and then as Yvette said, like you, once you get on their email list or their radar, you will find out when they're going to have these town halls. And folks are having uh, Zoom calls like we're doing right now, um, where they're still trying to get the information out. And then obviously, like in terms of uh, newspapers, right? Like I, you know, we subscribe to the Baltimore Sun, Washington Post, uh, New York times and things like that and so like wherever it is that people get their information or even their entertainment like there are outlets there where you can find out more okay so when you think of the senior uh generation yeah uh, from what i can see there is there isn't a, a one place where a person could just pick up the phone and just say hey look i want to stay involved in what's going on in my district where do i start because mm -hmm. places that you mentioned, you know, the newspaper or, um, you know, social media, um, do we have one central location? Can we call? Um, well, my goodness, it's called, the, it's called the Maryland Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love That's it. Right. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what we do. MDDems.org. That's exactly what we do. You can go to our website. You can find ways to volunteer. You can find ways to get involved. You can find ways to connect with our elected officials because mm -hmm. they're there on our website. So that is exactly what we do. Yep. Okay. And, or, and give us a call or email us and we'll, we, we can help you out. Okay, so um, let me, um, we're going to go away from that. Um, are there certain states that have high or low voting numbers that you recognize? I mean, in your travels, uh, can you say, well, I, we noticed that in zip code areas, so-and-so, you know, it, it is low voter turnout as opposed to another. Do you have um, information about that at all? Either one of you. So Eva's probably a good person to answer that because of the work that she did with uh, the state chairs. Yeah, and and, and 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 Kelly, are you talking about in in terms of Maryland, or are you talking in terms of the 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 state? I mean, the, the nation. Uh, I'm talking about in Maryland. Okay, so I I don't know. Do you in have Maryland? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. Go ahead. Definitely, definitely. So, so, so for Maryland, we um, we're we're pretty good. Like, I mean, in terms of like what the areas where we would like need to increase um, our voter uh, um, uh, voting is like in, usually in our um, more rural areas, right? Like the Western Maryland and, and Eastern Shore and Southern Maryland. Um, obviously, these are areas where a lot of times we do not have a lot of Democrats. But in terms of overall, the voting um, should be higher. I, I will say that you know in 2016, Maryland had the eighth highest voter turnout of any state with 67% of eligible voters um, casting the ballot. So in, t in terms of like overall as a state, we are, we are doing well, but there's we want to do more. Um, and I think with the activities we're doing for 2020, getting ready for 2022, um, we are going to see those number increase. 
also, we've already seen these numbers increase right now in terms of the vote by mail um, that is happening. We've had 1.6 million uh, um, ballots be processed. Um, today, October 20th, is the last day that people can request their, their ballot. Um, and we expect um, to even have higher numbers for our in-person voting that's starting uh, with early vote October 26th through November 2nd, and then November 3rd being Election Day. So there, there's always work to be done to increase those numbers. Um, um, but overall, as a state, we we are, as I said, like in number eight, we are doing um, pretty well, but we know there's more to be done. Okay. All right. And Yvette, did you want to expound upon that or? No, I think Eva's correct. And um, what we are finding with each elect election cycle, especially since uh, 2014, um, at least on the Democratic side, that there seems to be more and more of an intensity. And sometimes that happens when you're not in power, right? So we haven't had the governor's mansion for, for two cycles. So the intensity seems to be really strong on the Democratic Party because, let's face it, um, every party wants to be in power. And uh, you tend to, to see your numbers tick up when you're not. Um, and so there is an urgency. That's the way I would describe what, what I'm feeling, what we're feeling now. Um, especially in the numbers of ballot requests and, and ballots that are being returned, uh, which is why, you know, Eva could, could talk about uh, those numbers and what we expect to see going forward between now and Election Day. Mm -hmm. Our job is to make sure that that intensity carries over from cycle to cycle, which tends to be challenging, which is why, you know, we, we operate um, on a cane principle, constant and never ending. Uh, principle of organize, organizing and making sure that we keep people engaged even in the off cycle yep. because that's when you tend to lose people so mm -hmm. we try to find a way to keep people engaged throughout okay uh eva did you want to add anything to that or you did no, that, that, that I think that's that's it. it, it it's, it's never over because there's there's always a campaign going on or one you have to get ready for. So for us, like it's getting through these next two weeks, um, but then getting ready for um, 2021, we do have uh, some races in Annapolis and Frederick that we, we're gearing up for, as well as the big, big uh, kahuna of, a, of an election uh, we got coming up in 2022. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um have you either one of you ever experienced any backlash because of your party affiliation or the fact that you know you are a woman um have you seen anything have you noticed anything there or is it a challenge you know not really and i think part well for me um being the democratic party chair in a blue state Mm -hmm. tends to minimize that a bit. I think it might be a little more challenging if we were in a state that was predominantly Republican. Yeah. Uh, but because we're in a blue state, um, I haven't experienced that per se. And one of the things that I can say about our, um, our Democrats uh, in, in, in the state, yes, we're a big tent party and we're a party that has a lot of different um, ideas and, and attitudes. But basically, we have the same values, the values of what we think Democrats ought to be, which really makes it, um, it makes, not makes it easy, but it does make it so that we can all work together towards a common goal. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, in closing, I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, can you tell me how your organization, the Maryland Democratic Party, um, how it will make a, di a difference um, after the election. Will you still be as visible as you are now uh, after the election? Madam Executive Director? Yeah, yeah. Here's a, uh, yes, and in some ways we, we probably will be e even more visible because one, Joe Biden is going to win, right? And so that, 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 that victory is going to be at our tails and we're going to feel good and we want to peacock it out, right? And, 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 and go into 2021 with that, with that favor. And so, you know, for Yvette and myself, like, you know, we, we're going to get through 2020 and we're, we're doing everything that we, we need to do in terms of our swing state uh, voting and like we're, we're calling into these uh, battleground states Monday through Sunday. We're also calling into Maryland to voters to tell them that they can vote and they can vote by uh, by mail or they can do in person just make a plan to do it. We're also texting folks doing chase ballots like me and we know people who have requested ballots and chasing them down. So all that is like warm up 
All right, this is the, the, the getting ready, getting conditioned for 2021 with those races in Annapolis and Frederick, but then also 2022 when just for everyone, like we have our, our governor's race, right? And it's an open race. Hogan is out. He's term limited. Um, so we're going to have, you know, folks on that side who are new, folks on our side, um, all the general assembly, the senators and delegates are going to be up. We may even have competitive races in comptroller and, and, and attorney general and, um, uh, uh, um, in, in a U.S. Senate race, right? So these are all things that are, are coming, this perfect storm, right? Mm -hmm. And so we know we have a Herculean thing, uh, task that we have to take care of. Um, and we've already been thinking about laying the plans for those years. Um, and that way, it, I think we're going we're gonna to need this win. We're going to need this, this, in, this motivation to carry us through these next two years. And the thing is, you know, what happens at the end of an, an, of, at the end of an election, and Eva can speak to this too, because she's been on stage, I've been on stage, <laughs> and you put so much into getting ready for the performance, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have that performance. And when the performance is over, there's this sort of a letdown, but you want to go back and recapture what you've been through, even though it was stressful, even though it was horrible, yeah. yes. but you want to recapture that again. So what we want to do is capitalize on that feeling because there's been so much intensity with this election. We mm -hmm. want to say, hey, we got more work for you to do. Okay, we got that one done. Let's move to the next one. And a lot of times people are ready to, because they're not ready to let go, especially when you win. Yeah, They're not ready to let go. So what we want to do is capitalize on that and say, okay, you won one, how about let's go in for another one? That's right. And then we take that into 2021 for the, the uh, municipal elections, the local ex elections that we have, but then into 2022. And we think, because as I said before, there is a hunger among Democrats because we have not had the governor's mansion since 2014. And so there is a hunger uh, in the Democratic base right now to take back the governorship here in Maryland. And we intend to capitalize on that and we intend to win. There you go. Okay. Now, um, one last question. What is the alternative plan? Do you have, uh, and when I say alternative plan, uh, I'm not going to say the other thing, but I'm going to say, do you have an alternative plan um, if things uh, turn out a little different? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm a, a peculiar kind of person in this way. I, I don't even want to put that in the universe, if that makes sense. But there is an alternative plan. But if I speak it, then that makes it real. So I prefer to stay on the course that we're on, that course of positivity, <laughs> uh, because I don't even want anyone that's out there phone banking and those people that are canvassing and those people that are giving all these hours mm -hmm. towards this victory. I don't even want them to hear that they're that I'm even considering that we're not going to win because I don't want to dampen enthusiasm in any way because I think right now we have all of our volunteers in an incredible space where they just want to work, work, work. And so what I want to do is give them that space and give them that encouragement that I feel myself mm -hmm. and I want to impart that to them. So if there is an alternative plan and if, the, if we have to put it in place, it'll come after November 3rd, but yeah. until then, there is no alternative plan. Okay. Our plan is to win. Okay. Yeah, we're going to win. Yep. Well, I like that. Well, ladies, I want to thank both of you very much uh, for allowing me to talk with you. Um, after the election, I, I hope that uh, maybe we will be able to uh, come back and, and talk again um, about uh, the final selection. And, um, I, and I just enjoyed it. So uh, thank you both so much. Oh, thank and you for thank having you. us. This was great. This was really good. So we thank you. Again. <laughs> Being a part of the political process can make a difference. Being informed and knowing your rights is part of our constitution. Make sure you get out and vote because your vote will make a difference. Stay safe.